I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode here at the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Mark Middlestead. This week, our topic was the wonderful mind. And on today's episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast Weekend Edition, we're going to discuss the very nature of energy. Do you want to know why we're stressed out? We've lost our connection to nature. Ram Das once said, If you think you are enlightened, spend a week with your family. What he meant is that for as wonderful as our mind is, and as deep within we think we have gone into our true being, just being around our family, which knows all the right buttons to push to trigger emotional reactions, is enough to show that we are nowhere near enlightened beings. I would even take it further than he suggests, because we have removed ourselves almost entirely detached from the natural world. If you think you're enlightened, or even think you have grown so much in your personal development, I suggest you go out alone in the wilderness for one week, and spend that week with only your mind. Bill and David mentioned that most people are so unwilling to be alone in silence and solitude that they will fill it with any kind of distractions to fill that void of silence and being alone. I agree, because nothing is going to disturb your energy quite like your own mind. You want to see how programmed and unenlightened you are? Pack a backpack with only the necessities to stay alive and go out and live with nature for one week alone. Just you and your mind. We're stressed out because we live artificial lives in an artificial world. There's absolutely nothing in this world we humans have created that connects us to who we really are. We've evolved into a species that cannot even handle the natural world in a peaceful, enlightened manner. We have created artificial cages of comfort that no longer has any connection to nature. We are so far removed from our own true nature that we can't be anything but stressed out. We can let go of everything to temporarily deal with those things that stress us out, but the one thing we cannot let go of and still remain in the flow of life is our connection to nature. We are natural beings subjected to the laws of nature, and no amount of thought, imagination, or personal growth will ever change that fact. We call it evolving, but if we measure the progress of our species by how detached we've become from nature and still manage to live, there is no other way than to be stressed out. Answer this question. Could you go back and live a life in harmony with nature without any comforts of modern life? Could you live without the internet? Without your smartphone, TVs, modern appliances, houses with furnaces and air conditioning, automobiles, or anything else we've invented to make life comfortable? Can you? Would you? Of course not. And yet we'd all rationalize and justify why not, including myself. And because we live artificial lives in this artificial world, we turn a blind eye to the destruction of the very thing that supports life itself. We are so removed from nature that our idea of getting back into nature is a walk around a man-made pond in the middle of a subdivision with homes constructed of plastic, with golf course lawns poisoned by our desire to control nature. 
Well, perhaps we'll go to a park that was once a thriving natural world, but we've stripped it of what it once was and reshaped it to resemble some facsimile of nature, yet surrounded it with concrete parking lots and sidewalks, with water fountains and park benches. We've been programmed to believe our purpose in life is to go to jobs in man-made artificial structures with the sole purpose of creating man-made artificial objects to buy and sell, with most of it ending up in the tragic landscape of a landfill, only to replace it with more of the same, which will also eventually be thoughtlessly discarded. We no longer grow our food, we manufacture it, package it up with plastic, only to throw the plastic away so we can microwave it and poison ourselves with it. And then when this artificial food source leaves us sick and dying, we turn to synthetic drugs in a vain attempt to heal ourselves. Look around and tell me this isn't true. We can attempt to justify it, but that is just our programming talking. We have lost our connection with nature and have become reliant on artificial comfort and material things to replace it. Except nothing can replace it entirely, despite the fact that we've convinced ourselves we can. I'm not suggesting we need to give up everything we've evolved into, but we at the very least must find some balance with modern life and nature. Right now, we are totally out of balance with it, literally living on top of each other, racing around each other, fighting with each other, and ourselves, just to survive physically and mentally. And we are losing. When I was younger, as a wildlife artist, part of my job, my purpose, was to study the animals and landscape I painted, and to do so, I had to live among them. I often took lengthy backpacking trips out west to live with the plants and animals I painted, and to absorb myself into the natural world to find inspiration. I didn't just drive out to a national park, park my van, and have a snack at a picnic table at a convenient rest area. I didn't go for a day hike and sit on a rock in the sun for a few hours before returning. I didn't stay in hotels or campgrounds with any comforts. I lived for a week or more at a time far out into the wilderness, hiking perhaps where no other human had ever ste stepped foot. I went deep into the Badlands interior where I've gotten stuck in quicksand escaping it only to be left with boots encased in nature's concrete. I've listened to packs of coyotes howling in the moonlight, and I've even been surrounded by herds of bison all around my small tent in the middle of the night. I've hiked deep into the black hills of South Dakota and studied black bear and cougars. I've studied pronghorn antelope and mule deer in their environment. I've explored the Rocky Mountains of Wyoming and Montana and the Cascades and Olympic Mountain Ranges of Washington. Hiking around and climbing mountains in search of wildlife where I also experienced areas of the world devoid of all life in the stark, silent landscape of rock, ice, and volcanic ash from the Mount St. Helens eruption where life could no longer exist. I'm sure not unlike the moon might be. I've been surrounded by herds of Rocky Mountain goats and elk. I've been out near a pack of wolves, listened to them howling, and followed their tracks to a deer kill. I studied the same pair of bald eagles for five years. I watched them raise their young every year and even learned what their calls meant. I've walked over glaciers, sat on snow fields in the middle of summer, and walked under the falls of glacial waters. I've immersed sprained ankles in water so cold it was barely above being frozen. 
I wasn't just understanding the concept of nature from a documentary on National Geographic. I experienced it firsthand, in person, dealing with the heat, the cold, the weather, the unforgiving terrain, injuries, sickness, the bugs, the birds, the animals and plants where I was the intruder and had to tend to myself. Yet I was welcomed by the natural world because I respected its power. In this awe-inspiring world, I also found myself in a way no other experience could. I was alone in silence and solitude, surrounded by nothing man had anything to do with. These experiences changed me, and I didn't even go to the extreme of having to hunt for my food or shelter. I brought everything I needed to survive in my backpack. I can only imagine those who do this hardcore and live totally off the land as our ancestors did. You want to find yourself? Go out into the wilderness and lose your artificial programmed self. You want proof that we are disconnected with nature? Go live among it totally immersed in it for one or two weeks, with only your mind to keep you company, and see how disturbing it might feel, almost to the point of driving yourself insane, leaving you begging yourself to go back home to this artificial life we've created. If you want to put your life into some context, get away from this life that you are struggling to deal with and allow nature to reveal you in your most vulnerable state. This is a perspective few will realize, but for those that have, it is an experience one will never forget, and it will open you to the truth about life. This experience is not camping nor a vacation, but redemption. If this does not permanently change you, No amount of personal growth will ever suffice because this kind of life experience is raw and real, perhaps the only kind that will not allow you to accept the illusion of modern life. Nature is a powerful force of energy. Go on a diet, exercise, meditate, journal, state your affirmations, and whatever else you feel the need to do to make sense of this world and to help you understand yourself and to live a better life. But make no mistake, if you separate yourself from nature, none of it really matters much. This modern, comfortable life is just an artificial illusion of our own creation. We must live in accordance with the laws of and in harmony with nature, or we will always be at odds with our true self, the very essence of our being. When we live unconscious lives disconnected from nature, we are disconnected from a very deep level of our own self. Nature is the essence of our physical manifestation here on earth, and yet we deny it. We attempt to artificially produce it, even though it's already been given to us for free, as caretakers of it. And we are doing an amazingly poor job of that. And we wonder why we're so screwed up and stressed out. Does this really come as a surprise to you? Okay, so what can we do about it? It's not like we're all going to go back and live off the land like our ancestors. Most of us, my present self included now, are most likely not going to run off into the wilderness for a week or two alone. But we have this wonderful mind with which we can consciously be aware and mindfully live more in harmony with nature. How can we do this? I'm more aware... To live more in harmony and being in an energetic balance with it. Everything is energy 
and our choices reflect whether or not we are directing our energy towards that harmony with nature, even as we balance it with our life in this artificial world we created. There are so many things we could be doing to remain connected to nature, far too many to just list here. But there are some very simple ways we can change our behavior to be vibrating in tune with nature. We are always stressing drinking lots of water, as we should. But how many of you are drinking bottled water? Bottled water companies do not produce water. Nature does. So these companies don't produce water. They produce bottles. And this plastic alone pollutes the earth and hurts the animals living on it more than just about anything else we humans do. So we can stop buying bottled water for one thing. Use metal water bottles instead. Another thing we can do is stop using plastic straws or utensils from restaurants or stop supporting the companies that do. Will you? It's an easy choice, but a person who is living consciously and is aware will not drink out of plastic water bottles or use plastic straws and plastic utensils knowing the damage it causes. We consume and discard far more plastic packaging than is necessary when it really isn't even needed at all. It has gotten so bad that islands of plastic are floating in our oceans. Do you eat meat? Well, I'm not a vegetarian, nor a vegan. But if you eat meat, stop buying it from grocery stores that get the meat from factory farms that treat animals inhumanely, or fast food corporations that strip rainforests clean to raise the animals for these food factories. Instead, buy eggs, poultry, or beef from locally owned farmers and ranchers that allow the animals to live in harmony with nature before their lives are ended for us to use as food. Do you even think about it? Most have been programmed to not even be aware of it, and of those that are aware will justify their choice because they are so disconnected with nature to not even see the impact it has on the earth and the others that live on it. How responsibly connected with nature are we with where we spend our money? Are we even aware if we are supporting those companies who are environmentally, environmentally responsible? Do we even care? The more disconnected we are with nature, the less apt we are to care about such things. And so we just unconsciously continue to support those companies that also do not care. Now, you may ask, does it even matter? Well, as beings of energy, every choice we make in life is either working with the energy of all things or against it. So yes, every choice you make either works with and thereby raises the collective energy, or it works against it and lowers the collective energy. The proof is right here in front of us. We are destroying the very planet that gives us life. And what we put out there always returns to us. I always go down to a park and hike along the river where I see bald eagles, herons, ducks, geese, and all kinds of wildlife. The park's grassy areas were recently sprayed with Roundup, which is a poisonous chemical that has been banned entirely in Europe. Their intention was to rid the park of weeds. Aside from it poisoning the ground, it gets down into the river and poisons everything else in its path. Well, it turned out it killed all the grass. All of it. It's all brown and dead, along with anything under the grass that lived there. So they reseeded it and are now watering it every day. 
Amazingly, the only thing now growing are the weeds they tried to eradicate in the first place. The grass still won't grow, but the weeds are coming up. This is how disconnected we are with nature. Think about your own lawn. There are more living organisms in a handful of soil than there are humans on this planet. And yet we kill it with poisons to rid ourselves of what we call weeds. And weeds are really just another plant that we just prefer not to have in our lawn. Yet weeds, like dandelions, are the first foods pollinators, like bees, use. Kill the dandelions, and you kill the pollinators that need them. Kill the pollinators, and all life on this planet will cease to exist. Do you still not see how our energy is all entangled and intertwined? The programming runs so deep, even those who are awakened and aware can still be walking about only half conscious. Isn't it our mission to create a shift in the planet? To solely focus on our own personal growth without any awareness of the impact we are having or the legacy we are leaving behind ultimately serves no one. We need to reconnect to nature and then connect it to our purpose. Perhaps you can't go live out in the wilderness, but you can go to a park and study the plants and animals living there and meditate. Be one with them for a while. Restore your energy. Maybe the closest thing to nature you have is that one plant in your living room. Sit with it. Study it. Be aware of its energy as a living thing. Its energy is your energy. We always talk about creating awareness and setting intentions, but that is insufficient because we also must take action. What are our actions really saying to the universe about what we desire? And how are they manifesting in our life? Think about where you are directing your energy. We have a wonderful mind, but I'm not so sure we are using it to serve our purpose, individually or collectively. We've paved paradise and put up a parking lot. And all that means to some is that they can now find a parking spot. Be the change you wish to see in the world. You want to create a shift in the planet? Create a shift within yourself. What is this shift anyway? Energy. If you recall in last week's podcast where I said energy is a shapeshifter, it's always moving, always changing, yet always in balance where the positive and negative are proportionate. High energy is measured by the low and vice versa. Energy brings matter to life. That little weed you want to kill because you've been programmed to hate it, the energy within that gives it life. And it's the same energy within you that gives you life. Kill the weed, and you not only destroy the physical manifestation of the energy within, you disturb the energy within you, even if you aren't aware of it. Your programming won't allow you to realize this, but your energy is affected. Take this to the big picture perspective. When we collectively kill life on this planet, be it animals on factory farms, acres upon acres of rainforest, polluting the sea life, and even the life under the surface of our lawns, what do you think happens to the energy of the planet? the energy we share with it. To where do you think this energy is then shifting? Is it shifting to a higher or lower energy? Remember, you are not separate from this energy. We are all one energetically. 
You might think that the island of plastic in the ocean doesn't affect you because you cannot personally experience, but you'd be wrong. It's disturbing your energy. You just don't know it because you're half asleep. You can close your eyes to it, but you cannot run from it. You can't escape your own energy because energy is what connects all life. So when you rationalize your thoughts, beliefs, and behavior, consider that it's only your ego telling you it's okay to destroy other life on this planet so long as you benefit from it. Except all the while your immediate external world appears to benefit, for example, your family, your nice car, your house, phone, TV, your manicured golf course lawn, your energy is taking a hit, and now you are left wondering why there's something wrong with your life, but you can't connect the dots. All it is is manipulated energy. Make your purpose in life count for something besides making yourself happy. Create a shift in the planet by shifting your own energy into the light and then shine this light out into the world. Be the change. Well, that's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply clicking like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, 